Hello, welcome to Maths with EJD. In this video, I'll start talking about vectors. So it's an introduction to vectors, and it is always good to define what you want to find. Because someone says, what you define is what you find. So let's talk about definition of vectors, definition of vectors. Okay, first of all, talking about vector, or let me just go straight. We already know it's time to define it. So a vector, right, is a mathematical entity. A vector is a mathematical entity that has, that has both magnitude both magnitude and direction, magnitude and direction. Vectors, vectors are often represented, represented as arrows. They're often represented as arrows where, where the length, where the length of the arrow, of the arrow indicates, indicates the magnitude, the magnitude and the direction, and the direction in which, in which the arrow points indicates the direction of the vector. So let's take an example. Example, consider, consider a vector a vector v, you know, uh, we put the arrow on top to show uh, that it's a vector. So ordinary v is different from v with an arrow on top. And there are many ways to show all this notation. So consider a vector that represents, that represents a force of five newtons acting, acting, towards the east, acting towards the east. Here, five newtons, five newtons is the magnitude, five newtons is the magnitude, and the direction, and the direction is east. So if you want, uh, if I want to plot that, right? You know this is north, south. This is um, this is west, and this is east. So what we are simply saying that is that our vector, which is five newton, it should be something like this. You know, acting in that direction, and that's five newton. So the magnitude is five newton, and the direction is the uh, the direct the direction is the direction <laughs> towards which it is pointing. Okay, so then we have to talk about the notation. Notation. So how do we show a vector? Generally, vectors are typically, vectors are typically denoted, denoted by bold face letters, by bold face letters. E.g., you have V, you know, it's thick, not the normal V. So, or, so you either put it with, in bold face or with, or with, an arrow or with an arrow over 
a letter like the one I showed before, e.g., you have normal V with arrow on top. So maybe for writing's sake, it's probably easier to have V with arrow on top uh, because it may be difficult to always want to write V and make it bold. So that's how to show a vector. So if you want to take an example, it's something like this. Uh, if you, let A, let A represent, let A represent the displacement, displacement, the displacement vector from point P, from point P to point, to point Q in space, okay? So you see A is the vector, now it has an arrow on top. So that's just a, an example. So next we move on to talk about scalars versus vectors, scalars versus vectors, scalars versus vectors. So first off, scalars, scalars are quantities, scalars are quantities, quantities that are described, that are described only by a magnitude. They are described only by a magnitude. Say a number, say a number, and do not have direction. They do not have direction. So examples of scalars will be things like, examples include temperature. You know, you can say it's the temperature today is 33 degrees centigrade, you know, or if you use Fahrenheit to do that. So examples include temperature, mass, maybe your, your weight now is, is that, mass and time. So we don't say that I, I weigh 70.5 kg, you know, that's just all you say. You don't say in a particular direction. So that's the idea of, of uh, scalars. That's the idea of scalars. Temperature, mass, and time. So there are, there are quantities that don't, you don't get to talk about them in terms of direction. So let's talk about vectors now. Vectors, on the other hand, right? Uh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so let, let's, I'm not done with that yet. Let's talk about a specific example now, specific example. So we, we can say that the mass, the mass of an object, the mass of an object is 10 kg. This is a scalar, this is a scalar because it only has magnitude, because it only has magnitude okay so that's a very good example now let's talk about vectors vectors as previously defined as previously defined have they have both magnitude and direction have both magnitude and direction okay so for example for example the velocity the velocity of a car moving moving at 60 kilometer per hour towards towards the north towards the north is a vector. This is a vector because you have the magnitude and you have the direction towards which it is acting. So it is a vector as it includes, as it includes both the speed, the speed uh, is the magnitude and the direction and the direction. So that is vector. So let's continue to talk. Let's talk a bit more about magnitude and direction. Magnitude and direction. 
so magnitude and direction okay so the magnitude the magnitude the magnitude of a vector is a measure is a measure of its length it's a me measure of its of its length it is a non negative it's a non negative non negative scalar quantity so it's always non negative it's a non negative scalar quantity so example would be if v represents if v represents a velocity vector a velocity vector with a magnitude with a magnitude of 20 meter per second this means this means the speed this means the speed of the object is 20 20 meters per second that goes so talking about direction now the direction the direction of a vector the direction of a vector indicates indicates the line indicates the line along which the vector acts the line along along with the vector acts this is often it is often given in terms in terms of angles in terms of angles or cardinal directions you know i've talked about east and north the other time those are cardinal directions so you can talk about direction in terms of angles or cardinal directions so example would be uh, a vector a vector a a vector a that's the arrow on top a vector a with with a magnitude with a magnitude of 10 units of 10 units pointing pointing 45 degrees above the positive axis above the positive axis the positive x axis rather the positive x axis in the x y plane in the x y plane has has both a magnitude has both a magnitude and a direction okay and now you know we talked about that x y plane so this is you have the x axis here and you have the y axis in this case so this is the origin for sure and then so it's 45 degrees above the positive axis. So it means that from this positive axis, right, we have 45 degrees here. And then this vector is 10 units. So that's a very good example. And talking about that, it's very, it's a nice time to talk about um, graphical representation of vectors, graphical representation, graphical representation of vectors graphical representation of vectors so we can have the arrow representation we have arrow representation arrow representation like what i just did up there with the 10 units vector acting in the direction 45 degrees from the positive axis so you have the arrow representation uh which goes like this vectors are graphically represented vectors are graphically represented represented as arrows as arrows in a coordinate system in a coordinate system 
the tail of the arrow, the tail, the tail of the arrow, the tail of the arrow is the starting point, is the starting point. Like what I did above. So this is the tail of this arrow now, and this is the starting point, starting from the origin. So the tail of the arrow is the starting point. And the head of the arrow, the head of the arrow, the head of the arrow is the end point, is the end point, as you can see up here. So this head is where you have, you have that cap on top of the arrow. So that's the end point of the vector. Okay, look at an example. So a vector u, a vector u starting starting at the origin starting at the origin the origin is 0 comma 0 x is 0 and y is 0 and ending and ending at the point and then at the point 3 comma 4 in a two dimensional cartesian plane cartesian plane that's the x y plane like we said before cartesian plane plane can be drawn can be drawn as an arrow can be drawn as an arrow from zero zero to three comma four okay and let's bring that on so you have this 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 is x this is y, this is the origin zero. And we have a vector u starting from the origin to three comma four. Let's say this is three on the x axis and this is four on the y axis. So where the two meet is this point. So it means your vector is actually this. Okay, that's a vector u. Okay, so that's it. So of course, we, we can talk about the magnitude calculation. That's the next thing to talk about, the magnitude calculation. So the magnitude calculation, magnitude calculation. So with that, that's when you have now, starting from the origin and going to three comma four, we can actually calculate the magnitude of that. In fact, we can do the direction too. So. Magnitude calculation, that, so for a vector, for a vector V with, with components, with components Vx, Vy in two-dimensional space, that's at the xy plane, the magnitude, the magnitude, the magnitude is given, is given, the magnitude is given, is given by the absolute value of V, which is equal to square roots. Okay, well, before I even go too far, let me start by, so first of all, uh, the magnitude of a vector v, right? Okay, well, it's given by... I'm trying to see what to do here. Okay, no problem. So let me do this first. It's given by the absolute value of v equals square root of vx squared plus vy squared. So that's how we talk about magnitude. So an example will do justice to this. So, okay. Um, the example now would be this. So we have example... Say the vector we've talked about is actually, um, okay, let me do this. If V is equal to three comma four, you know, then the mag, so if this is three comma four, that simply means that, um, that simply means that, um, 
okay well we, we are going to talk about that means of representing later so, so let me not get ahead of myself so if it's three comma four then the magnitude the magnitude is v which is equal to three squared plus four squared so you know this plus that squared following this formula and that is equal to square root of three squared that is nine four squared is 16 that square root of nine plus 16 25 and that is five so the magnitude of this vector is five actually then now let's talk about the direction how do we compute the direction so we talk about we've done the magnitude calculation how do we do the direction calculation okay um the direction now the direction the direction of a vector of a vector in two dimensions can be found can be found using trigonometry using trigonometry i have a playlist on trigonometry which you can check out uh, trigonometry specifically specifically by calculating by calculating the angle theta the angle theta and by the angle theta we mean some something like this this angle here that's a very good example of angle theta so we want to calculate that angle by calculating the angle theta okay so by calculating the angle theta with respect with respect to the positive to the positive x axis so and it is calculated so in, in fact you can already see this this is like your uh, this is your v x this is v y and of course from from trigonometry we know this is the opposite of our adjacent and what combines them together is actually tan so it means that tan theta is equal to opposite v y the the adjacent is v x so and since we need theta right theta is going to be actan of v y over v x and that's how to get direction and that is why down here now the theta is actually given as the actan of v y over v x and that's how direction goes so for an example let's do let's take that we have this um, for the vector, for the vector v, which is equal to three comma four, the direction, the direction, the direction is theta, which is actan of v y. Of course, you know this is v x and this is v y, so that is four over three, and actan four over three is approximately. Of course, that is still uh, something like actan of, uh, I think, one whole number, one over three. That is 1.3333 and so on. And that is approximately 53.13 degrees. So from the positive x-axis, you can know that this is actually, this theta is actually 53.13 degrees based on our calculation from that place. Okay, so this is it. That is how to calculate um, the angle, the direction of a vector. Now, let's talk about the next thing, and that is um, the component form, the component form. Component form. So vectors, vectors can be broken. Vectors can be broken down into components into components along the axis along the axis of a coordinate system of a coordinate system so for example okay i think i've adopted this method of using this brightly colored one, for example. So example, so a vector, a vector B pointing, vector B pointing in a 
three dimensional space in the three dimensional space can be represented can be represented by its by its components by its components as b equals bx in the direction of i okay uh, so we put a cap on over that we're going to see the concept of magnitude and all of this as we move okay i think yeah we've talked about magnitude already you are going to talk here about unit vectors and all that in consequent uh, in videos after this so you have bi in the direction of the unit vector j then plus bz in the direction of the unit vector k like that so uh where 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 i j and k where i j and k are unit vectors they are unit vectors along along the x y and z axis respectively respectively so i mean this all these things you have considered form the foundational concepts needed to understand more advanced vector operations and applications in physics engineering and mathematics and with this we come to the end of this video so watch out for the subsequent uh, videos and if you have not subscribed be sure to do that hit the notification bell also so you can always get alerted when a new video is released and don't forget to comment like and share thanks for always stopping by see you later bye